Now that we've seen an overview of DMAIC and we've talked a little bit about defining problems, let's crawl inside DMAIC and see how the structure of the system works in terms of project management. So remember, the project is going to have different improvement milestones. That's each of these words, define, measure, analyze, improve, control. We'll see an objective for each of those states, the series, a, a series of questions within each one of those states that describes how we're going to conduct this inquiry, and then there are going to be methods that address these questions. Below this, we'll see the activities and tools that we're going to apply inside the process in collaboration with the team to understand what can we do to perform better. So how are Six Sigma projects actually performed anyhow? Well, the projects are selected based on the sense of urgency for the improvement that's needed. There's an initial charter given to the team by the managers of the process, and they say, this is what we'd like you to do. So this is a descriptive problem statement. And then those projects will be further refined into a charter, and that charter then becomes a description of how we're going to go attack the problem. Projects are then tracked by the process owner or the supervisor of the process, and then the team of workers is going to be facilitated by the green belt to address each of the steps in that problem-solving process of DMAIC. The methods will be tailored specific to a problem or use. So there's no required set of tools that are used, but there is a generic set that apply in many general circumstances. But sometimes those tools won't work and sometimes they're not appropriate. So you're going to have to learn as a green belt when you apply which tools and how you guide them through them. In addition, you may want to check with somebody who's at black belt level training to find out are there other tools that we should take a look at that were beyond the scope of the training that we're offering you right now because there still are other things we can do, not just the limited set that we have for the green belt competence level. Once we've done the problem solving and demonstrated it, we want to evaluate the solution prior to implementation to make sure it works, document it and integrate it into work, and then lessons learned should be taken across the organization. Finally, we should have a final report, and the final report should document the learning and the accomplishments of the team for a couple of reasons. One is for recognition of the team so they feel good about what they've done, but another is because we're going to continue using the process, and as a result, we should record all of those changes that we've made to the process so that we have an understanding of what's the basis for change the next time an improvement has to be evoked in that process. So let's start at the top with define. So the define step is really specifying the problem to be pursued by the team. It begins with the business issue, the customer concern, or the problem, and it ends up with the project charter. The questions that are asked in here are, what is the issue or concern? How big is this business problem? Where is the problem occurring? How does it affect customers? What people should address it? And we're going to use a set of tools that we'll talk about here in just a little bit operational definitions. How do we specify this problem in a measurable way? Problem statement. What is it that we're actually going to address? A SIPOC map or a high-level process map that goes end-to-end -end from the supplier to the input to the process to the output to the ultimate customer. And we can see the flow of the process from one end to the other. We might take a look at a pie chart to understand what are all of the components that co comprise this particular issue or problem that we're addressing. We'll analyze the customers to say which customers are having problems. What's going on? How do we address them better? We'll have a stratification analysis to break the problem down into each of the components which might be further analyzed. We'll conduct exploratory data analysis with that dirty data to understand what was it telling us in our history when we made performance decisions based on the dirty data which created the messy process that we're living with? And finally, out of all that, we'll decide what is the charter? Who's going to do it? What are the resources? How are we going to make this team work? Over what sort of schedule? And that then defines the circumstance we go through. The measure phase is the next thing we want to accomplish. So measure is determining the magnitude of the problem, and it's evaluating how good is our measurement system. Is our measurement process capable of detecting a change in process performance that the customers will not tolerate? In other words, if we can't detect changes that are important to the customers, the measurement system has to be changed. The charter then is going to be our ending beginning point, and the ending point is we understand the performance gap we need to close, and we have the baseline history of the process understood. So we understand where the problems occur, 
Where is, how well is the process doing? And how well could the process be doing? We understand, you know, where are the defects produced in the process? How the process can fail? So we'll look at the risk and problem, uh, potential failure analysis. What are the root causes or potential root causes or the causal structure of the system? Does history show us trends? Is anyone doing this project any better in terms of different steps in the process or people engaged in the process or equipment in the process? What is the cost of this process gone wrong or the cost of poor quality? And then how could this process be simplified? Again, we have a set of tools, mapping the process, measurement systems, data collection. We'll have a graphical summary to understand what does the distribution of the process over time tell us. And then we'll also take a look at this in terms of the sequence as an individual's charts as what actually happened in time. So it's important to have two views, an enumerative view, which summarizes everything we know about the process, and the historical view that actually accumulated into that total view we see. An enumerative view is usually seen in an Excel chart. We see all the data we have about everything. But that's not good enough to be able to do a definition of the process. We have to take a look at the time series and understand how did the process physically change in time as we record the changes in process performance. We'll also take a look at some lean tools like 5S Process Housekeeping. How can we get waste out of the process? Where is the value in this process? And using a value stream map. And maybe also a desired state. We see the current state of the process as it is, and we start seeing ideas that we would like to create for the new state. In the analyze phase, what we're doing is trying to understand what's contributing to the changes we see in the process. So we're going to determine those factors that contribute the most to variation and waste in this core problem. We begin with making the baseline from the measure phase, and we end with having a set of hypotheses. These are the things we really think are the root causes and need to be tested. So we're going to be able to understand which of the factors in this problem create the most variation, which of them shift the mean, which of them reduce the variation, and which have no effect at all. We understand where the process produces waste, and does it cost too much, and why it costs too much, how much variation is explained in the process. What are the potential root causes that we need to investigate? Are there things we don't understand or missing variables? We can, might be seeing that much of the problem is really not understood or explained by the factors we have, and we have to go look at things in a deeper level. And maybe that's going to say it's not a green belt project, it's maybe a black belt level project, because we don't have the tools to do those inquiries. We'll also try to understand what is the experimentation, what is it we need to do in the improve phase? And again, our tools that address these questions. There are things like analysis of variance, hypothesis testing, cycle time analysis, Pareto charts, regression analysis, cost analysis, and using the five whys both as an inquiry process as well as with data to understand how can we actually demonstrate not just supposed conditions of causality, but can we actually demonstrate causality in the process. We turn to the improve phase, and here the objective is to conduct experiments or pilots to test out what are the best conditions and what should be the operating performance envelope of the process. This begins with a set of hypotheses about the root causes, and it ends with an improvement plan saying we have actually demonstrated these are the things that will make a difference. So which factors affect performance? Which ones manage variations? Which ones shift the average? What should be the operating envelope in terms of the magnitude of these factors? What happens if we go outside the range? What happens if we need to control it? Which things can be controlled? How could we manage that process to keep it in a state of control within the solution space that we'd like to have? And then can we demonstrate how this works in the real world? So we might have a number of different methods to use here. We might have a Kaizen Blitz to try to implement lean systems. We might have a decision workout to test policy changes. We might have a process laboratory to test human condition changes in the processes. Maybe we do operational benchmarking about the equipment. Or we conduct a simulation analysis for things that are not easy to test in the system. Or maybe we could do a structured scientific experiment or a confirmation experiment. Following this step, we go to control. 
the control is saying, we've learned our lessons. Now what we want to do is specify how the work process will actually work based on the recommendations we've made for improvement. So it begins with this recommended improvement plan and it ends with that definition of standard work. So what standard work must be defined is a question. Which factors must be managed? What's the tolerance range? How are we going to maintain this process? How do operators need to be trained? How do we prevent errors in their work? What's the action plan we're going to have? Who's going to check the action plan? What do we do in terms of implementation? Who's going to be responsible? And then how do we capture the benefits? So at this point in time, the methods, many of them are lean methods. Standardized work, visual factory, mistake proofing, folk yoga. All of those are basic leans, 5S process discipline. So we start seeing many of these standard operating procedures out of lean are going to be implemented in terms of the control phase. But we might also have statistical process control. We might also have uh, an engineering process control system. And so part of the, the challenge that we're going to have as an industrial engineer is say, are we going to use some of the equipment knowledge we have about sensor systems and feedback loops to be able to create a set of control algorithms that will give the workers what they need so they can consistently perform the processes? So we might have, again, some things that go beyond the worker's capability, but this will then be put into the process control plan we have. And then an implementation plan for how all the changes will be made and a benefit capture plan for how finance can go back and check and say, did each of these improvements deliver what the expected result was? So the job of the green belt in all of this is to facilitate that process. We ask the questions, we help people with the use of the tools, and then we maintain the documentation of the process as we are going through the learning steps through define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. We then present those findings to the process owner who is then ready to say, yes, you've convinced me. This process change is what we need to do. And at the end of that, we've done our job as a green belt. So we'll continue thinking about how we're going to go through this process and how we actually execute that defined stage in our next videos.